Hurricane topic, you're, you've got the floor. It doesn't happen frequently when a hurricane's making landfall mm -hmm. during our Morse code of weather, so I, I thought I'd go more in depth to Hurricane Francine here. I did this in 2022 with Hurricane Ian making landfall on a Wednesday at about 4 o'clock, and that's what's going to happen here with Hurricane Francine towards the uh, Louisiana coast, probably impacting some of these communities like Morgan City, and then we'll come up between Lafayette, Baton Rouge, and New Orleans into the southeastern part of, of Louisiana with the tornado watch on the east side of the track of the storm, but it will probably weaken pretty rapidly once it gets over land back to Towards the tropical storm, but currently with 100 mile per hour sustained winds right around that eye wall. With hurricane warnings all uh, extending inland towards Baton Rouge, tropical storm warnings in that orange shading a little bit more inland, and this will produce a lot of inland flooding in places like Baton Rouge as well as throughout a lot of Mississippi and towards Memphis with 5 to 10 inches of rain coming from the system, most of which will come on the east side of the track of the storm. And that's why the exact track of hurricanes is so important because we can break up the uh, motion of the storm and the uh, scale of it into four quadrants. So the right front quadrant is the most impactful for winds, having enough spin to spawn tornadoes. The storm surge with the counterclockwise winds around that eye wall, pushing all of that water at the coast. Uh, upwards and allowing for that surge to form and that can be the most devastating part of a hurricane and then also the inland flooding on the east side of the storm is usually where the most moisture falls from these tropical systems. On the left side or the west side of the track of the storm usually a little bit uh, weaker, there's less impacts on that side of a storm. So that's why we call the eastern side and especially the right front quadrant of hurricanes the dirty side of the storms and that's not where you want to be. That's where some of these places in New Orleans and southeast Louisiana could end up. But there's a lot of interesting ingredients that come into these tropical storms. Of course, the fuel for them comes from the water and when you have water temperatures above 80 degrees like we do in the Gulf and much of the Atlantic, that allows for these storms to rapidly intensify, sometimes right up to landfall like we're seeing here with Francine. And also you need the converging winds to force that warm, moist air upwards to form the clouds and storms in the first place. But then what's really interesting is the upper level winds that blow uh, and impact the storm. So that can do one of two things. It can tear apart the storm. We call that wind shear and that's bad for uh, hurricanes to strengthen further. But the upper level winds also steer these storms and push them in certain directions. And if they're blowing in the same direction that the storm is moving, that can allow some of the uh, venting in the upper levels of the atmosphere for the storms to strengthen even further. Think of it as like an engine where the storm is gaining all that fuel from the ocean and forming these large clouds that rotate around that eye. So right now we're at peak hurricane season, September 10th, 11th, and then we'll start tailing off with the number of hurricanes. But this year was notable because we had no named storms from August 13th to September 8th. The last time that happened was in 1968. And despite the busy year that was forecast, one of the reasons why it hasn't had many named storms, at least recently, is because of the Saharan dust coming from Africa that's being picked up from winds and carried through the tropics. And that really slashes some of these tropical ingredients that we just talked about. That causes some of the sunlight to be reflected, and it can lead to the drier air instead of that abundant moisture that we need for these storms to form in the for first place. So the, it can limit tropical development. That's what we've kind of been seeing. But tropics have been heating up, and with the steering winds that push these systems to impact land or push them out to sea. One of the really interesting things is with the jet stream, that can steer the storm. So with Francine, that steered it from near Brownsville, Texas, to now make landfall in Louisiana instead of near Houston. So oftentimes, with a dip in the jet stream over the United States, that can either pull hurricanes towards the Gulf Coast or steer them away into the Atlantic and just be fish storms. Uh, and these are kind of the common hurricane tracks coming off of Africa through the Caribbean and even sometimes towards the Gulf. Oftentimes, we see a Bermuda high pressure that forms in the summertime, and that can either steer the storms towards Florida, the Gulf Coast, the East Coast of the United States, if that Bermuda high is strong enough, but it can also kind of pick up the storm and then pull it up towards the East Coast and sometimes out to sea. Speaking of steering currents with storms and how they're interacting with other weather features, what about when two 
hurricanes or tropical cyclones are close to one another. This is called the Fujiwara effect. This was on August 7th of this year when tropical storms Fabio and Amelia were really close to one another in the eastern Pacific and they kind of danced around one another. Well, here's what it is. Dr. Fujiwara in 1921 proposed that two strong tropical cyclones or ones of equal strength will slowly rotate around each other, not combine right away, but after they kind of do that dance around that common point in between the two storms, uh, one of three things can happen. Number one, the smaller storm can get absorbed by the larger one. Number two, eventually they'll move away in different directions. Or number three, and the rarest one, is they'll combine to form an even larger storm. So eventually, one of them got absorbed with the stronger one, in this case, the Fabio and Amelia situation in the Eastern Pacific in August 2024, where uh, one of them was able to kind of ingest that weaker system. And this is a very rare phenomenon, but it happens a little bit more in the Western Pacific, where there's more space for these storms to interact, more ocean water. And this Fujiwara effect is also very rare, but can happen with two tornadoes that are next to one another. Another really interesting uh, influence that uh, can uh, uh, impact how these tropical systems track is terrain. And this was an extreme example earlier this year in July with the mountainous terrain of Taiwan deflecting this typhoon away from land before it loops around to make landfall in Taiwan. And this has happened before with the island of Taiwan where that mountainous terrain, hurricanes don't like that because that right. breaks apart the storm. Yes. So it deflected it and then looped back around. But really interesting stuff, especially with that Fujiwara effect when two storms are right next to one another and they kind of do a little dance around one, each, one another before possibly combining. It's an interesting thing. It's an interesting phenomenon, that's for sure. I'll just stick to blizzards. Yeah, yeah. and now it's a tornado threat uh, in the next several hours yeah. in Louisiana. As, for Francine. Again, that storm is moving ashore. Mm -hmm. So Coming inland. Let's hope it all works out well there. Yeah. Thanks, Jacob. Yep, Thanks, you're Jacob. welcome. Stay with us. We'll be right back.